This is a full chat GPT tutorial. This tutorial is being made after the latest chat GPT update. The update was in November 2023. This video should be relevant for a couple months. So one of the biggest changes with chat GPT is you don't have to select the model now. So in the top left corner, the only two options you have now are GPT-4 and GPT-3.5. Now before you had to select what type of GPT-4 model you wanted, did you want to browse with Bing? Did you want to make images with Dolly 3? Did you want to analyze spreadsheets with Code Interpreter? Now ChatGPT has all of those models rolled into one. And then if you're on the free plan, you can still use GPT-3.5. They say it's great for everyday tasks, but what are you doing? You should be on the full program. This is gonna change people's lives. You also have the option for plugin still. That's eventually gonna be changed to action, so I'm not gonna cover this in the tutorial. This is gonna be obsolete soon. Okay, when you first log in, this is the main page. Before we start writing chats, let's look at the settings. So in the bottom left corner, zoom in, you're gonna click your profile, and you're gonna to go to settings and beta. And your first option is to select the theme. I like light. You can also change this to dark. This is how dark looks, a bit better on the eyes. And you also have system, which will grab your default browser settings. Here's an option to clear all chats. I like my chat history, so I'm gonna keep this. Next option is beta features. You have an option to turn on plugins. Again, soon this is gonna be turning to action, so I won't be covering this. And then you have advanced data analysis. I'm assuming this won't be an option in the future as well. It's gonna be just rolled into the chat GPT-4 model. Under data controls, you have chat history and training. Do you want your chat history to train future models of chat GPT? If you wanna keep things private, you can turn this off. Shared links are links to some of your conversations. If you wanna share your conversations with other people, you can create a shared link and then send it to that person. If you wanna export your data, that's how you do it. You'll receive a downloadable file to the email address registered for the account, and that link will expire after 24 hours. I just keep everything on the platform, so I don't need this. Then you have an action to delete your account. So the last option is your builder profile. With the newest update, you can create custom GPTs, and this will be displayed in the marketplace. So when people enable your GPTs, they'll see who built it. This is also how you're gonna get paid with the OpenAI revenue sharing model. You'll be allowed to link a website to your builder profile. And when you're ready, what you'll do is select the domain and then verify your domain. So I'm gonna turn back on light mode. Now in the default chat GPT-4 model, you'll be able to do a lot of things. You know, the sky's the limit. When you first land on the main page, they give you a bunch of options just to jumpstart your chat GPT journey. So they have four ones here. They have show me a code snippet, explain nostalgia, give me ideas about how to plan your New Year's resolutions, and compare storytelling techniques in novels and films. Let's click this one, explain nostalgia to a kindergartner. So clicking that's gonna right away create a new chat. And if you noticed, it also created a new chat on the left side, and it's organized by the date the chat was created. This was created today, this was created yesterday, and these were created in the previous seven days. The cool thing about ChatGPT is it titles your conversation based on the question that you originally asked it. And if I click this and go rename, you can see the full title of this conversation, and it's explaining nostalgia to a kindergartner. I can change this. Let's say I just want to delete and hit enter. Now this conversation's name has been changed. Here's the share link option that I showed earlier. You can click this, and then you can copy link down here. Now let's go to an incognito tab. I'm gonna paste this. And there is a link to our conversation. So I could send this to anyone who'd benefit from what I learned. Back in ChatGPT, after you start a conversation, the AI model will respond to you. So let's read what it wrote. So again, I asked it, can you explain the concept of nostalgia to a kindergartner? And it wrote, sure. Imagine you have a favorite toy or a special blanket that makes you feel really happy and safe when you hug it. Now, think about how you would feel if you grew up and saw that same toy or blanket after many, many years. You might feel a warm, happy feeling inside because it reminds you of the fun times you had when you were little. That feeling is called nostalgia. It's kind of like a hug from the past that makes you smile and remember the good times. Awesome, that's exactly what we wanted. It's a nice, clean, short, concise response by the chat GPT-4 model. Okay, in the bottom left corner here, you have four options. You have copy to clipboard. So if I click this, it will copy that chat. And let's say I pasted it back in. You have a thumbs up and a thumbs down. Clicking thumbs up provides feedback, and I clicked it here. Thumbs down does the opposite. And this is when you're training the model. You're kind of training in the back end. You're saying, yes, I like the response. I didn't like the response. And it'll be more than likely to send good responses in the future when you like it. And this last option is the regenerate option. So if you didn't like what it said, you can click this to regenerate. Let's click it now. And you can see it's loading. And when you regenerate a response, it asks you, 
Was this response better or worse? So I can go better, worse, the same. I think this is the same. I'm gonna click that right here. And now this little carrot, you can go between the two responses. This is the first one, talked about a special blanket. And the second one talked about the same favorite toy, but it used a fun place instead of a blanket. So you can see these are slightly different and they both have emojis at the end. It looks like the same emojis. But you could keep hitting regenerate to get the exact response that you'd like. Remember I had the share option in the left corner here. You also have a share button up top. I'll click that. I could share this new conversation by copying the link. Okay, let's delete this chat and we're gonna start a new one. This time we're gonna talk about this paperclip icon in the bottom left. Zoom in. GPT-4 allows you to do a bunch of things like upload files, documents, or even pictures that GPT-4 Vision can look at and describe what's in it. So let's do a picture. I'm gonna click this button. It's gonna load up my computer, my downloads file, and let's click my newest thumbnail here. Let's click this, I'm gonna open it up, and I'm gonna write, describe this image in as much detail as possible. I hit enter and GPT-4 Vision is gonna look at this image, it's gonna read it and it's gonna describe it for us. And look how accurate it is. This image depicts a futuristic debate stage with two entities facing forward. Yep, that looks like it to me. On the left, there's a Caucasian male human debater. He's dressed in a formal dark suit with a tie. And on the right, in a stark contrast, there's a humanoid robot. You'll see this response got a network error. Now you might run into problems sometimes because ChatGPT is very busy. This is not a big deal. I just hit regenerate and it will try again. If you wanna stop the generation at any time, you can hit the stop button here and you'll be presented with the same options as if it finished the text. Let's just close this. So the sky's the limit for what you can do with GPT-4 Vision. Two famous examples that they showed in an open AI presentation is a guy took a picture of his bike and asked how to fix the bicycle seat. So he uploaded a picture of the bicycle seat to ChatGPT and it told him exactly what to do and what tools to use. The other famous example is taking a picture of your cupboard and all the food in it and asking ChatGPT, actually let's do that right here. I'm gonna copy this image, save it to my computer. Let's start a new chat. New chat can be started from the top left corner. I'm gonna click this and upload that image. There we go, upload and go, this is my pantry. Give me three recipes that I can make. And ChatGPT will look at what you have and suggest some food options for you. I think that's unbelievable. Look at this, based on the items visible in your pantry, here are three recipes that you can consider. And here are the three recipes, tomato and rice soup, chili, and chicken noodle casserole. And it's even telling us instructions on how to make it. This last step, combine the pasta with the soup mixture, top with breadcrumbs if available, and bake in an oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And let's take a look at the image for the tomato and rice soup. Yeah, it's grabbing this right here, tomato and rice. For the chili, it's noticing there's a can of Wolf brand chili without beans. Let's see if we can find that. Yeah, right in the middle here, Wolf can chili. So it's able to see what's in the image, read it, and spit out recipes. Okay, I'm gonna delete these two chats just to keep things clean. Let's say we wanted to upload a file and we wanted ChatGPT to analyze that file. We do the same thing, but instead of uploading an image, let's do like a spreadsheet. So this is a Google spreadsheet of a YouTube promotion that I ran. I ran for seven days. I spent a total of $34. And I wanna ask ChatGPT, which day do we have the best subscriber results? So I'm gonna download this spreadsheet, let's download it into ChatGPT, let's upload the file, and I'm gonna go, which day did I get the best subscriber results? Now you can see it's analyzing the spreadsheet. You know, before it would just write something out, it analyzed, there was a purple check, and it spit out, the day you achieved the best subscriber results was day seven, on which you gained 239 subscribers. So it was able to read the spreadsheet and spit out an answer. And then if you click this button here to view analysis, it opens up a little pop-up box and you can see the Python code that it wrote to figure that out. And you can see the result of the spreadsheet that it looked at. So imagine doing this with large spreadsheets with lots of data. You could easily analyze it just with ChatGPT. Another option is to generate an image using DALI 3. And again, we don't have to select the DALI 3 model. We can just write right in the input box. Let's do something like draw me an illustration of a panda playing poker. You can hit enter. And it's gonna realize that you want a picture, so it's gonna draw from the Dolly 3 model. And you can see right here, it says creating images. It's not writing back any text, it's drawing the image. And there, it spit out a panda playing poker and it's an illustration. But let's say I wanna make some changes. Let's say I want another panda in the shot. That's great, but can you make it so that there 
are two pandas playing poker. And this is the result. Now the illustration has two pandas that are playing poker. So if I like this image, I can click it and I can download to my computer. Let's click this button. There we go. It's been downloaded in the top right. This info button shows the exact prompt that Dolly3 used to generate the image. Let's click this. And it took my really small prompt about a panda playing poker with another panda. And it turned it into something like a whimsical illustration of a panda bear seated at a round poker table playing poker. The panda with its distinctive black and white fur holds a hand of playing cards. And then down at the bottom, but with an added element of mystery due to the concealed cards. Unfortunately, the image doesn't have concealed cards. They're all showing the cards to each other. So if I didn't want that, if I wanted all the backs to be facing, I would write in the next prompt, please turn all the cards over. And then you can keep editing the image until you get exactly what you'd like. ChatGPT can also browse the web. And that's amazing because it's data cutoff point. I believe this model's is April 2023. So if you wanted the most up-to-date news, you'd need it to browse the web. I'm gonna go to ESPN and let's select this article here. I'm gonna copy this URL, go back into ChatGPT, paste it in, and go summarize this article for me. Now what it did is it browsed the initial URL. It realized that it's an ESPN article, but it couldn't access its text due to some restrictions on the website. But it read the title. It was about Giannis's 54 point performance. So it browsed another article on the web and it summarized that for me. So it was able to figure out that it couldn't read this website and it found a different one that was presumably about the same topic. And you can see it's annotating all from the same article. So this line right here, his performance nearly matched Michael Red's franchise record. Let's click this and it goes right to the article on a different website where it drew that fact from. But you don't have to paste in a URL. You can just ask it to browse it for you. So let's say I live near Toronto, Ontario. So let's go, what is the weather right now in Toronto, Ontario? And it's gonna browse with Bing. It's gonna search up the current weather and it's telling me where this weather was drawn from. It was drawn near the Toronto Pearson International Airport, the current time and date, the temperature and the wind gusts. Let's take this a step further. Let's go draw me an image about this weather. Now in this chat, it should get Dolly 3 and it should create an image based on that weather. I've never tried this before, so let's see what it spits out. And this is an image of the Toronto Pearson International Airport with 10 degrees highlight up here. Let's say I had an up-to-date weather Instagram page. This would be a cute little image that I could post in the morning of to give people that are traveling an idea of the weather. Now let's walk through a few examples of what you can use ChatGPT for. This is an email I got from a viewer of one of my YouTube videos. I'm gonna copy this and go to the ChatGPT. I'm gonna paste this in and scroll up and go, please respond to this email in a friendly manner. Hit colon, let's quote this. And there we go, here's a response to that email. I can just copy this, go back to Gmail, and reply. Just change my name here. Let's say you wanted to write an article for your website. You know, you could do the entire thing within ChatGPT. Let's say the keyword I wanted to target is the keto diet. Go write me an article about the keto diet. Make it as detailed as possible. Okay, and this is the full ketogenic diet article. So all I'd have to do is, let's copy it. You know, you can scroll up and copy everything. Or remember a copy to clipboard button here and paste it in. So let's say I was posting on Medium. I would just load up Medium and post in my article. You could do this with a WordPress or Webflow site as well. So I'm gonna paste that in, delete this last part, scroll up. The title goes in the title spot. You know, I'd have to make some edits here. These asterisks mean that ChatGPT was trying to bold this text. Actually, I don't care about this part, but I do wanna make these into a heading. This, let's make this a heading. And I would do this for the whole article. But let's say I really liked point number five. I could be like, please expand on point number five. And ChatGPT would look up to its previous response, go to the number five section, and would write more text under this subheading. So this is a good way to expand your article and make it more detailed. And look, you can see before it was just five short points. Now it's taken that keto flu, nutrient deficiencies, and long-term sustainability, and it's expanding on each of those points. And it's also adding a few here too. Impact on kidney and heart health, effect on bone health, risk for certain populations, social and lifestyle considerations. And if I like this, I just copy this text. I'd go back to wherever my article is and I would paste it under that section. Make a few edits. Here we go, delete some of these bullet points, delete these asterisks. 
and make this a heading. But let's keep going. We like this article. Let's draw from Dolly 3. You know, going back, this article is missing a very good cover image. So I'd go, make me a cover image for this article. Aspect ratio, 16 by nine. And again, it's gonna draw from Dolly 3. It's gonna create the image. Here we go. If I like this image, I could download it, go over to where my article's hosted. Let's click the add button here. An image generated by Dolly3. We now have a full article and image created all within ChatGPT. And finally, you might be wondering what this explore button here is in the top left corner. I'm going to click this. Now, this is where you create custom GPTs. This is a whole video by itself. So in my next video, I'm going to be creating custom GPTs. I'm going to be going through all of the ones made by OpenAI. And also once the marketplace is released, we'll be going through those as well. But for now, just know that you can create your own GPT based on its own set of knowledge that you can use personally or release to the public so they can use too. Now I'm very excited for this. And when the video is ready, you'll see it in the comment section below. But I hope you enjoyed this full walkthrough and tutorial for ChatGPT. And good luck with automating your life with AI.